In the last video, we talked about lighting in the EV render engine. And uh, we set up this little scene here, and this produced a result like this here. Now, in the last video, I said that this works slightly differently in the cycles render engine. Now, I have to correct myself because uh, the truth is that uh, using area lights in the exact same way that we use them in the last video, it's also going to work in cycles and it's going to produce pretty much the same result. And the difference between this technique and the one that I'm about to show you is just negligible. But it is a slightly different technique, which in some cases might uh, give you a slightly better result. It might be a little more convenient, uh, but that's up to you to figure out whether you want to use one or the other. But I'm going to show you just another simple trick on how to set up lighting. But this is only going to work in cycles, okay? So the idea here is that instead of using these area lights, uh, we're going to create planes or objects which are going to have uh, an emission material on them, and that's going to produce uh, the lighting for the scene in cycles. So uh, we have this scene from last time here with a bunch of area lights around it in different colors. Again, do check out my last video if you want to learn how to do this. It's a pretty useful trick and you can apply it to pretty much any scene that you ever create and it's going to look much nicer. But uh, for now, we're going to delete these area lights and we're going to replace them uh, with planes. Okay, So we're going to delete these lights and now our uh, scene doesn't have any lights in them and this is just a plain black scene. And we're going to switch to our cycles render engine. Now, I'm not going to use my rendered preview because my computer is going to be too slow if I'm doing the, uh, the rendered preview and I'm also recording at the same time. But I'm going to show you the result that this creates in the end. Okay, So instead of creating an area light this time, we're going to create a plane. And the same way we did before, we're going to move this plane up. Using our 3D cursor, we're going to rotate it to the side, something like this. And uh, we're going to move it backwards a little bit. So this is going to act... Uh, the exact same way as our area light did before, okay? So we're going to go to the material tab, we're going to add a new material, and we're going to set the surface to emission. Now we have to crank up the strength on this material to something like 25, and we're also going to add some color, and let's say this one is going to be uh, the blue side, and the other one is going to be uh, the orange, the warm side, okay? So uh, here we have, uh, we're going to set something like an uh, orange color here with, with almost full saturation, but not quite all the way. Let's set it to like 0 0.96 or something like that. And then we're just going to duplicate this a couple of times and rotate it by 45 degrees uh, around the center. And then uh, now we have a couple of these lights uh, surrounding the object, which is going to create this kind of environmental lighting from all these different sides. I said this will be my blue light, but then I made it the orange one. That doesn't matter. Instead, we're just going to make the other side blue. So uh, we're going to duplicate this plane one more time, now that we have these four in orange. And uh, on this plane, we're going to create a new material, okay? We're going to create a new material, which we're going to assign to this uh, plane right away, okay? And this is going to be our blue light source, okay? So emission, strength 25, and we're going to set this to something like a blue color, okay? So uh, now we don't want as much saturation on this blue color here, but we're going to figure out how that works out for us later. But something like this, about halfway, uh, or maybe like 0 0.7, 0 0.8 on the saturation, slightly less than the one before is going to work out best for us. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to duplicate this a couple of times and rotate it by 45 degrees each time until we get a full circle of these planes surrounding uh, our item here, or our object, our steering wheel in the middle. And then we also want to move these planes up because uh, unlike the area lights, these planes are going to be visible in the render, okay? When we look directly at them, we're going to see a very bright object over there. And we don't want that, in this situation, we don't want that uh, in our render. But sometimes, and the reason this uh, technique can be useful sometimes, is because you want to see an actual uh, light source. For example, if you're creating a lamp uh, on a ceiling, of course you want to see the lamp and you want to see that it's producing light. Whereas an area light, uh, it's going to be invisible in the render. So in that situation, uh, using a plane with an emission material would be a lot better. And we're going to rotate these up a little bit just to get them out of the way so we can't see them. And then we're going to quickly render out our scene. Now we can see based on this rendered image that the lights are working fine. So the colors are all right and the intensity is good enough. But uh, we're going to slightly play around with it just a little bit more by rotating the lights a little bit so that it gives us a slightly different and maybe a better result. Okay. So now we have all our orange lights over here and all our blue lights in the back here. 
but instead we want to have a kind of even distribution so they're coming from a, a one side uh, one color from the uh, one side and the other color from the other side instead of being like front and back okay so we're going to rotate these this way and now all our orange lights are going to be on this side and all our blue lights are going to be on this side and now let's check again what kind of result this is going to give us and as you can see the result is very similar it's just that the light is coming uh, from slightly different directions and now it's up to you to set this up whatever way you like you can also change the colors but uh, like i said in the previous video uh, it's always best to have one warm color and one cold color coming from different directions because that gives you the most natural result now if you guys are interested i want to make another video on how i textured this steering wheel here so do let me know in the comment section if you want to see that next but I hope this helps some of you guys. Uh, please subscribe and check out some of my other videos. And I hope to see you guys around.